Hey guys, welcome back. So we made a couple videos this morning and <laughs> I didn't like the way any of them turned out. So we are on our third one. I'll show you what we did. I have a leaf that I need to upload. It's not this, but it is in the similar color. Um, I didn't like the final product of this one. It's usable, but I didn't like it for what I was going for. And then I made another cane that was going to be a leaf. And the colors looked fantastic together when I did it. But obviously when you reduce it, the colors kind of blended too much. And it just looks, it just doesn't look real. And the way I did this was I just pieced colors together. I went green and then gold, blue, gold, purple, gold, green. But I didn't make it as a Skinner blend. It's just a regular leaf. And that's the same as this one. I just lined up a bunch of colors. So I want to do this again. And I should use the same colors. But I'm not because I'm ADD like that. And I'm going to do some purple and some peacock blue. This is all Sculpey Primo. So we're just going to kind of give this more of a point. Oh, it fits in a little bit better. Okay, so this is um, this is all Sculpey Primo. So this is purple, peacock blue, and this is peacock blue with a little bit of white in it. I thought the center, I think I wanted the bottom of the leaf to be a dark color. But I wanted a little bit of light, so I put a little lighter color in between it. So I'm going to run this through the pasta machine and I'll be right back. Okay, so we have our Skinner blend done. And I came out at a really nice size. I got this big bubble right here. I don't know why. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cut them in strips. So this is going to be a big cane. And when I make my feather cane, I don't like making them big. Because I have a really hard time keeping the shape. But we're going to try this. And I think we're just going to make the strips like this. So we're going to go like that. We're just going to kind of... Ah. Keep going back and forth. If they're not quite perfect, I'm not really worried. But I would like to keep them obviously in order. Now the thing with this is if you make a feather straight like this, it might all blend in like that other one I made. So on this one I'm going to add a little bit of white in between. I'm hoping that'll help, but I don't know if white's going to make it too bright. Okay, so we're just going to do that. Okay, so I'll put those two up there, and this was the bottom. So before I get into anything, this would be a strip of white that I'm using. Okay, so I can do this. this I'm just kind of testing to see if I like it. So I would just basically be putting that in between like that. And then going all the way up. Or if I wanted to. I can put that in between. But to me, that black and white just throws it off. Okay, so we're just going to do it this way. So basically, you can get a piece of tile, you can get an acrylic block, which is what I have. 
Or you could even do it on the glass itself. So why don't we do that? I know I got such a mess over here. It's always a mess. And I want the purple to be at the top where the peacock's going to go. So I'm going to lay that right there. And then basically I'm going to add some white to it, but I'm going to stand that white up on its end and then lay it over. And that's going to help me get a little bit of a curve. Now the first one is always the hardest. I don't think I have a credit card. Oh, I do. You just use like a credit card just to hold that down as that comes up like that. Okay, make sure that's touching. And then grab another purple. And you're just going to go up and down. I'm going to keep the colors in order. This one kind of cut a little weird. That's okay. I'll cut that one off later. So again, these are all cut at a zero, or I'm sorry, at a, a number one. And the white is a number three. Yeah, and I can't see where I cut it because I didn't cut it. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to do that. Just going to go all the way down with that. So obviously you're going to need more white than you will any of the other colors. Lay that up flat. Push that down. There's all different kinds of ways that you can do this. So if you find an easier way, go ahead and do it that way. This way works pretty well for me. Okay, now we're starting to get into the blues. Looks like I might have to cut a little bit more white. One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe about seven more pieces. So let me cut more white. So I'll be right back. Okay, I think I got enough cut up. So we're going to continue what we were doing. Okay. It's a pretty easy cane to make. I have a feeling I'm going to need one more white. Yep. Just one more. This one I need it to go a little farther. Although I'm not really worried about the ends because you're always going to cut off the end. Okay, so I just need one more white. So let me grab that really quick. And again, the white is at a number three. That is basically our leaf. Okay. 
now that we've got it kind of all together we're gonna cut it in half and we're about two inches maybe a little short up on top so you can stretch it if you want just to make sure it's all about the same size okay so where are we at all right so we're going to cut this right in half Okay. Could have probably gone a little bit even thinner on the white, but I don't want it to blend as much as the other one did. So now I just need a peacock pearl <clears throat> to put in the middle. I'm thinking of doing peacock and gold because this was off another cane that I had. And it's sitting here, so I might as well use it. Okay. Doesn't look too bad. Okay, now the center. Now the center, I have something that I made previously. I want to see how it looks. It's got a little bit of purple in it. So it may work okay. So I'm going to start from about, now I'm going to start with the wider. If I can keep it wide, I'd like to. And that gives us that little peacock. So what I'm going to do, though, ah, I got a little bit of this blue left. I'm going to wrap it with this. So I'm going to make this number three. Let's see if it'll go all the way around. Well, we were pretty close. Let's see if I can stretch that out just a little. And if you're going to stretch one side, make sure you stretch the other side too. So that it's not thicker on one side. that off right there now what though I'm gonna line it up with the shape here you don't have to but I'm gonna try and line it up with the bottom Every time you pull it off, put it back on, it stretches just a little more. Okay. So we're going to look at this. See if I want to add a little more gold to it. I think I am. I think I'm going to add a little more gold. Oh, look at that. We have a nice big strip of gold here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to go to a number two on the gold. I'm hoping that will be enough. And I'm going to do the same. Okay, it's just a little bit short.
Okay. So as long as I've got that gold and all that touching like that, then I'll be okay putting that in. Okay, we're going to go a little smaller. So my goal is to get this this purple to go around it. So what are we at? Two and a quarter. Let's take this to two and a half. And that should be plenty. Now we're just going to close it up. Okay, now with the peacock cane, this is going to be the big part and this is going to be the tiny part. So if you'd noticed, you got a lot of where it's kind of folded in. I'm not going to really worry about it. I'm just going to trim this just a little bit. Because you can see where the white is just a little thicker and it may thin itself out as I go but I don't want to take the chance so as long as I got most of it off I'm okay so again what we want is we want this to be bigger than this and this is where I have a problem so I could make this into a circle but if I do that it's going to take the the leaves and bring them all the way around so I'm gonna try and leave it this shape but I'm gonna concentrate on making that top bigger and this bottom smaller okay so we got plenty of time and plenty of wiggle room <laughs> wiggle room it took me a while to get that out didn't it Okay, but we're going to try and make this top a lot wider. See? Alright, so we're just going to reduce it like this. So I'm going to hit pause. And this is all I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to do this. Take a little in the center. And then I'm just going to go around. And just bring that all out and it's very soft clay probably gonna have a lot of waste but I don't want to do this again it's the third one we've made today so I want to have a happy one okay so that's what it's gonna end up being okay so now we're just going to do our normal, kind of like a triangle, like we do for our flower petals. And again, try not to have a whole lot of waste. I don't think that's possible. Okay, so let me go ahead and reduce that and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so I'm done reducing for now. I like to go a lot smaller because I love using these for pod beads or just to hang it off a chain for earrings. So I'm just going to try and round out the top a little better. So I'm actually, I'm going to cut it in half. Not going to look yet. 
And I'm just going to roll it. Yes, I looked. <laughs> I'm just thinking now. If I put a little bit of purple on the top, if it'll give me a little bit more, a little more of a round shape. I do not like reducing as a flower petal just because I just seem to I lose that circle up on top. But if I laid a little piece of purple down, then that takes away from it. So we're going to leave it alone. I'm going to reduce this a lot smaller. So I'm going to leave. We had a lot of waste on this as well. So we'll just use that for swirl beads. And we're going to cut that right in half. And I'm going to take this a lot smaller, maybe half of this size, believe it or not. Now this would be a perfect size to hang off a chain for earrings. Or if you're like me, you'll put three or four of them on a chain. So you're going to want to go really small. So again, I just want to make sure that my top is rounded instead of square. So I'll rock it as I pull. And it's always that center. And maybe I can just do a sample pod bead for you. A very hot dog that just walked in here. She had a rough day yesterday swimming with the kids, the grandkids. So I didn't walk her last night because she couldn't really move afterwards. So I think she's waiting for me to take her tonight though. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like without dropping the phone here. Oof, okay, we'll give you the right side. Obviously, that just needs a little bit more work. Okay. So that just needs to be shaped a little better. So let's just concentrate on this one. Okay. So that's a really good size for a pod bead, I think. So we have some of this that's no good. So it's going to be depending on how much you want to use and if you want to make a pod pendant or something for earrings so obviously you're going to want the same size and it's going to be a lot bigger okay so there we go we have the same size what we're going to do though so i'm going to take a little bit more off of it uh, that's a little thinner so because we're going to be covering it. So let's check this out. When you have several different colors, it kind of makes it hard to get them even. That looks about right. It just looks a little longer, doesn't it? So I'll cut off a little more. Actually, let me show you the correct way to do this. And that way, you know that you know that you know that you got the right size on both. So I'm just going to grab a circle cutter. This is a little small, unfortunately, but one, two, three, and four. Okay, let's see how big those are. 
This way you know you got the right size. Okay, I'm gonna go one more on that. Oh, I turned off the air because the dogs were in and out and now it's just roasting in here. I was hoping we'd get some rain, but that didn't happen. Okay, so we're just gonna make this into a little a little teardrop shape. I like that one much better. And yeah, it takes a little bit of practice. I still don't have it down to where my teardrops are always the same size. Okay, so we lost you there. Our phone kind of died. So what I've been doing while I charged up a little bit was I just cut some thin slices of these feathers. And now this is the fun part. Not really, but this is what makes the earring. So basically I'm just setting them right across from each other. Some of them unfortunately I made a little thinner than the other ones. So I got rid of those. And then when you finish that first layer of four, then you're gonna go halfway in between and you're gonna lay your second layer. So I always go across. So let's get two more. I'm not going really thin on these, but I'm not going really thick either. So I don't want it to be real bulky. So you just have to play around and figure out what size is good for you. Okay, so I've got one there, so that's the next one, and then straight across from there is going to be right there. Okay, oops, I'm going to be short one, so I'm going to need one more. Actually, I'm going to need four more. So we're going to need a total of five to finish this one. And I got that right. Got one, two, three. That makes four. And sometimes they're going to curve on you, so make sure you lay them so that they're straight up towards the top. And with me, I don't put the holes in it until after I bake them. To me, that's a lot easier. Okay, so there's one pod. I don't know if you can see that really well. So this is the cane, and that's the pod. So let's go ahead and make one more. See this one? This one's bending a little bit, kind of curved. So just reset it back down there if that happens. Okay, so we're going to do one more, and let's see if we can get them both to match in size. So what do I got? 4, 8, 12, I think I've got 16. We'll make 12, just in case. And there we go, first time tonight. I 
think that one was too thin. So that's six, seven, So there's 12. This one's a little, little whiter than the other one. go in between all of those so we need four more I think I can use that one so we just need three Okay. And this is what I say. If it doesn't match the other one, then I just keep going. If I make three or four more working on making the same size, then one of them is going to match up to the other. If you have one that's a lot larger than the other one that you used, don't worry about that. You can use that for a pendant. So as you can see, I have two of them, but even though they're the same size, that looks just a little bit wider than the other ones. So I'll continue to make a couple more of these and we'll get a pair. And then I'll show you how to string them for a pair of earrings or for a pendant. These are kind of big. So I have a feeling these are gonna be pendants. So I'll make a couple more smaller. I'll reduce this down even smaller than that and make a couple earrings and I'll try and show you the finished product on the community section if you guys have it because I don't know when I'll get to it. But I hope you like that. Um, so far that's my favorite so far and we will talk to you later this week. Bye.